वर्ल्ड समिट इज अ वेरी मच वॉन्टेड फोरम बिकॉज नॉलेज इज ऑलवेज ग्रोज वैन इट इज शेयर्ड एंड इट कैन नॉट ग्रो ओनली इन क्यूबिकल्स सो वर्ल्ड समिट और द काइंड ऑफ समिट्स और कॉन्फ्रेंसेज नॉट ओनली ब्रिंग नॉलेज फ्राम द एजुकेशन सेक्टर इट सेल्फ एक्रॉस द एजुकेशन सेक्टर बट ऑल्सो अदर्स इकोनॉमिक सेक्टर्स विच हैव डायरेक्ट इम्पैक्ट ऑन एजुकेशन एज आई सेड वी ऑल एम्फेसाइज ऑन टीम बिल्डिंग एंड टीम बिल्डिंग अमंग द सेक्टर्स एंड अमंग द एजुकेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वी कैन ओनली मीट इन वर्ड समिट वट इज द रोल ऑफ आई सी टी इंप्रूविंग प्राइमरी एजुकेशन एंड सेकेंडरी एजुकेशन या सी एजुकेशन एज वी से देयर आर मल्टीपल काइंड ऑफ लर्नर्स at so far in india education has been confined i mean after the british period education has been confined to words reading and writing ict gives you a leverage of oral and auditory learning in india if we remember our heritage was uh, through uh, oral tradition of learning which we call anushrutis so so much of knowledge our vedas our culture have remained in the society because of oral tradition because oral tradition takes you gives you information gives you knowledge and also uh, develops your wisdom whereas and the speed is very fast if i speak something it goes to 10 people at the same time or 100 people or 1000 people that leverage ict gives us that something which i utter will reach like this video which will reach innumerable of people at the same time but if i write those seven people have to devote that much time so you know writing takes five times more than speaking and reading takes 10 times more than listening and grasping it so ict gives you that leverage which can really make human potential develop faster and the society as a whole grows that is a leverage Ma'am, what measures should be taken to ensure quality education to the larger population in india yeah quality as we have always been saying is relative whatever is a quality to one socio economic group may not be a quality to another socio economic group so quality we can't say is uh, defined or standardized we have to make quality as a uh, as a you know in a ladder and say okay if you are on this ladder you go to next ladder of quality and third ladder or benchmarks you have to fetch so quality is very very contextual and relative yeah. ma'am uh, cbsc have has started so many initiatives to achieve uh, equity education in india could uh, you like please uh, mention my both initiatives and what are the results see equity has been uh, one of the uh, national objectives and there are many schemes which cbsc has launched for equity in education one of course we can say that cce which is continuous comprehensive evaluation is also geared towards equity where an individual doesn't have to compete with peers but competes with oneself so so the frustration levels are very very less and motivation levels are very high because you are comparing where i was where i have reached and that way you know it gives them a uh, motivation to remain there and study and if they remain in the school they achieve what they are supposed to achieve so this is one way of giving equity second is uh, we are also trying to equalize the quality of education in that way there are two major initiative one is to uh, uh, to take a test of teachers so that they are of the same quality which we have sim- recently conducted ctet there is another initiative which cbsc has taken is accreditation of schools where each school will be accredited and the students will know that i am getting the same quality of education it through the same quality of teacher and in the same quality of in- input which are go- going in a school and same quality of processes which should happen in a school so these are few measures which we are trying trying to take up in order to enhance equity and also there are a few scholarships which uh, we want to bring other children to in the school which are di- at disadvantage and through the scholarship they will not have economic barriers not to join and hope we will be able to achieve yes.
fact, in terms of enrollment, India has among the largest number of students in educational institutions. But the gross enrollment ratio is much less as compared to global standard. So, how what should be done to mitigate these challenges? See, it is, it is not that India has the largest gross enrollment, India also has the largest population. So in any case, ratio to population, we have less in the school. This issue has been, I mean, this is a basic issue which policy makers have been struggling, how to really increase or how to bring all children to the school. Still, I mean, I'm a policy planner or maker, I see children on the road, in Delhi also, on the red lights, and there are these labor class children are still out of the school during school hours they are not on the roads after the school hours so that means there is something lacking now here i say there is a role of other ministry and other departments if these children are on the road traffic police can also be made accountable to take them to nearby school because teacher is in a school he can't go to roads and bring them and they must be having some rehabilitation some place to stay there the role of a urban ministry comes that they should check where which is their residence and from there count and send them to school so we have to have a home ministry social uh, ministry urban ministry and uh, demographic ministry role as well in order to increase enrollment it's not just education ministry so i think if all the ministries club together then only enrollment issue can be resolved what are your views on e-learning? E-learning, as I said, is certainly very good. But if e-learning is only dependent to reading or alphabets, then it is it's good that you can reach, I mean, phys from physical point of view, you can avoid libraries and can have the material. But e-learning should also be taken from the perspective of audios. We should not only use radios and audios for uh, music or for you know Sangeet we should also have for storytelling and latest thing like e-learning itself the concept should be broadcasted so people who are really just listening to radios who are just listening to audio tapes they should also get these messages so I would say that e-learning should also focus on content wise which is educational content then bhakti and romance I think we should be moving towards other direction also yeah what are your views on open and distance learning in india open and distance learning leads much much encouragement we have been falling behind just because we have not given due weightage and due importance to open and distance learning reason being open and distance learning should begin from the a stage where a child is able to read and write oneself only till that age till the time the child is not really able to read and write needs face to face or individualized instruction after that it should be made the child should become a productive member of the society at the same time enhance and if we give more encouragement to in service education more incentive even if i am employed and i go ahead and do something if incentive is given to me open and distance learning will be more more popular and it should be rather than we are pushing the children from primary secondary to university to phd we should have breaks in between they should go out in the world work and continue with them so open and distance learning is is a panacea to lot many things what should be done to, to produce industry ready knowledge and workforce in India? Industry, see when we prepare a workforce we are preparing for industry and to, what is happening a person starts learning once he joins the job so basically the previous knowledge is a basic generic skill and specialized skills are in the industry there is no harm in it there is really no harm in it because industry there are few industries they know that they have to invest one or two years in training of their new recruits then only they become productive member so we i mean either we should accept that situation and uh, say okay we are giving generic skill which are of analytical ability or problem solving and uh, few things which you can adopt or enhance as per the industry requirement so i mean of course but academia uh, has to be researching <coughs> 
for the need of industry but not training for the need of industry i mean on the job training should remain with the industry but research should come to the academia and vice chancellors of a university could also be ceos of few industries and it is a practice in few countries where ceos are the vice chancellors so at present we have a very compartmentalized service sector if i am a vice chancellor i cannot take up or cannot be you know is seen as a corruption or corrupt practices but if we really open up we will see it brings lot more advantages if industry and academia is together at high level yes ma'am yes what are the future plans of cbsc in uh i can say there are few things in quality as i said for equity and relevance cbsc has already taken for relevance we have already taken vocational education we are trying to expand for future plans there are a few schemes which we are taking for quality that is uh, teacher training we are going in a big way to uh, train teachers for in service training because at present in india there is a pre service education systematized we have institutions and courses for pre service education but once a person becomes a teacher they don't have systematic way of learning during the service period which course to follow which credit and at which level so uh, we uh, we are also not going to systematize uh, in service education but we are trying to at least facilitate and give some training on few aspects which are related to our innovations or new schemes so we are going a big way in teacher training then uh, as i mentioned we are also going for accreditation for quality and that's it my my, my last question is what is your dream my dream my dream is really that when i move on the street of india i should not see any person sleeping on those pavements that means we are still very very behind about urban needs of the children a shelter i mean a shelter and also i would not like any vendors on the streets so whenever a child comes to me on a red light selling something i take it as a as my failure as an educationist and as a policy maker and every time i ask them from where they have come what they have done what is their education because that gives me a little insight that where we are failing in making policies for this youth which is 14 to 18 year old and which is on the street thank you, thank you.